In Consumer Watch, cyber attacks have made headlines throughout the year. Now some businesses fear they could be targeted during the busy holiday shopping season. A recent survey by a cybersecurity firm called Cyber Reason found that 89% of organizations that have already been targeted online in the last year are concerned about repeat intrusion. Cyber Reason also found that the average ransom payment for online attacks skyrocketed to $5.3 million this year. A new CBS article breaks down this data. Many organizations are feeling vulnerable with nearly 500,000 cybersecurity jobs left unfilled. There are concerns that tiny cybersecurity mistakes by companies or organizations could lead to massive damage. Nicole Skanga wrote the piece, and she is joining us now to talk about this. So, Nicole, really interesting. You took a look at um, the report, and what stood out to you when you read these sort of predictions? Uh, what I sort of focused on is what we just said, these, like, little tiny mistakes. It's not going to be a big mistake. It's going to be a series of tiny ones cascading uh, mistakes that lead to something larger. Yeah, good to be with you, Vlad and Anne-Marie. And you're right, it's those phishing emails. But what stood out to me in this report is really the headline, you know, nine in 10 cybersecurity professionals surveyed. These are folks that were previously hit by a holiday or weekend ransomware attack. They say they're worried it's going to happen to their business again ahead of the winter holidays. But despite this concern, 36% said they had no specific contingency plan in place to mount a response, um, you know, this survey polled over 1,200 chief information security officers at businesses worldwide. And we often think about the damage caused by the cyber attack itself. But one thing we don't usually pay attention to is what this does to the community of cyber professionals and defenders who, trust me, are working overtime right now. You know, and, and you said this before, but keep in mind the average ransomware payment is up more than 500 percent compared to last year. So 86 percent of these respondents uh, report reported missing holidays or weekend activities with family and friends to return to work in the wake of a cyber incident. Us journalists can certainly relate to that. And get this, nearly three quarters surveyed actually admitted they were intoxicated while responding to a ransomware attack on the weekend or during a holiday, something the survey calls a risk factor for organizations that may not have been accounted for by incident response and business con continuity plans. You know, the bottom line here is these attacks occur when we least expect them. Ransomware criminals know that, and there's a concern they're going to take advantage of it this holiday season. Yeah, and we so often, the humans in this whole equation, are the weakest link. Um, so here's the thing, though, for businesses, for municipalities, hospital systems, I mean, part of the reason that they're vulnerable is because they're coming up against organized professional hackers, sometimes Russia linked, sometimes Russia backed. It's a really difficult thing to combat on your own. So the question is, you know, what's happening on the federal government level, you know, in terms of diplomacy, pressure, sanctions, what is the government doing to help um, protect us from these attacks? Yeah, Anne-Marie, a good question. In fact, the assistant director of the FBI in charge of cyber, his name's Brian Vorndran, he told Congress just yesterday, we've actually not seen a decrease in ransomware attacks in the past couple of months originating from Russia. This despite the fact that, you know, many of the major players our viewers might have heard about are evil, dark side, they've got these scary names, those behind the Colonial Pipeline and Kaseya software hacks are now offline. But the U.S. has punched back this year a new cybersecurity executive order has put stricter standards in place. There's more money, including $2 billion in that infrastructure bill we've been talking about over and over, uh, now signed by President Biden. Uh, the Justice Department announced last week that U.S. officials seized back more than $6 million in cryptocurrency and arrested two individuals they say were behind a July 4th weekend our evil ransomware attack. You know, one of the problems, one of these criminals remains in Russia and has not yet been handed over by Russian officials. And more and more cybersecurity experts are telling me that President Putin has ignored the requests from the United States to curb this kind of criminal activity. Uh, we see it every day, and it's still a problem for the United States. In your piece, you mentioned the cybersecurity industry has nearly half a million job openings right now. So what does that mean for vulnerability uh, in companies in need of security? 
Yeah, Vlad, it really just exacerbates the problem. The job market for cybersecurity has continued to grow, evening with a, even with a tightening of, you know, this so-called cyber skills gap. That's the number of individuals who have been educated, trained, capable of filling these really highly technical positions. Uh, and by the way, more than 1,500 of those vacancies can be found right now within the federal government. So, you know, the government took one step in addressing that problem actually this week, seven years after Congress first directed the Department of Homeland Security to build some sort of federal recruiting tool aimed at attracting professionals to help safeguard the nation against cyber attacks. It is finally launching. You know, that new system is called the Cyber Talent Management System. It's designed to speed up the notoriously red taped hiring process in the federal government and, and try to offer higher pay to incentivize skilled professionals to pass up that private sector job and work for the government. But, you know, nationwide and even worldwide, unclogging that talent pipeline, it's going to take a lot more than just this. Um, a congressional investigation into three major ransomware attacks this year noted that small lapses, as we've been mentioning, led to major breaches. Tell us more about these revelations. Yeah, well, this was a report that was released yesterday by the House Oversight Committee, uh, and it basically determined that, you know, these major ransomware incidents, the attackers took advantage of really relatively minor security lapses, such as, you know, single-user accounts controlled by weak passwords to launch enormously costly attacks. And when we say costly, I mean, that is a huge understatement. One of the incidents the committee investigated was the hack of CNA insurance. They were extorted for $40 million. Uh, but again, the bottom line here is that organizations with big security systems, you know, fall victim to really just simple attacks initially. That entry point in some cases was a phishing link. So this really underlines the importance of educating that entire workforce, not just the pros, not just the IT department. The report also showed uh, that some of the victims of cyber attacks often have questions about where they should go to? Should they go to the FBI when there's a cyber hack? CISA, Treasury, Secret Service, DHS. Um, so all of those alphabet organizations are currently trying to figure out, you know, the best way for businesses to really report when an attack happens, because it is so important that they respond in a timely fashion. So true. Nicole, thank you very much. Thank you. So for more of Nicole's reporting, you can read her full article right now on CBSNews.com.